a couple of reasons to do this. Let's get into the quickest way I found how to do it. Let's go. Waiting for the time. Uh, uh, I'm waiting for the all right, so we're here inside a machine and I'm just gonna load up one of these uh, crate cuts, which is one of the native instruments packs and I'll just play that right now. All right, so that's what that sounds like. Now let's say we wanna get one of these sounds into mono, not all of them, and you just wanna work with that. Um, the quickest way that I've found, and I thought in back in the day uh, that that button here was a mono conversion, it is not. Um, it actually just shows you this sample in mono. It's not actually showing, you know, converting the actual sound into mono. So just makes it a bit easier to just see the visual sample a little bit easier, uh, but it's certainly not giving you the result that you want. So what I do is I convert the sample into mono by using Isotope Imager. Uh, Imager 2 is a free plugin. I'll leave the link in the description below so you can get this plugin. Now let's play this sample, the kick on its own. Let's see what that sounds like. Now I'm gonna use the hardware to do some of this, but I'll show you how to do it on the software as well. So let's play. All right, so you can see the sample is a little bit stereo-ish. Uh, so it's got some stereo width and there's probably a little bit of mono in there because the kick on the low end would have some mono. But if we wanted to get this straight to mono, I'd just pull this right down. And now you can see that that is playing a mono signal. Vice versa, if I want to get more stereo width, you can pull that slider all the way up to get some extra width, put the stereo wires on, and there you are. You've got some instant width there. Huss effect it even more. Um, that'll give you some crazy width, and you probably wouldn't want to use it like that, but hey, it's there if you need it. So let's pull this down to mono. Now, we have a mono signal. You can see there it's playing through the sample, and I still don't have it on the sample, so I don't want to have to have plugins all through my project taking up CPU. You may, if you have a good computer, you may want to keep it there so you've got full control. But if you want to bounce this out, this is the way to do it. So just copy this. Now control, so command C on your keyboard if you're using a Mac. If you're on Windows, I think it's control C or something like that. I uh, just want to copy that name so that it doesn't, doesn't erase it because this project will uh, change when I do this little step. So to do it inside the, the actual project or the door, I should say machine, this little symbol here converts back to the project uh, that you had laid out here, so the scene or the sequence, and you can bounce this one sound out on its own. Now it's gonna bounce the whole sound as it is, like so the whole sequence, so it's not gonna sound how I want it to immediately, but we're gonna bounce that out and export it and then bring it straight back into the position as where it was before, and I'll show you what to do from there. So just pull this across, drop it straight onto the location that we had it before, and as we did with that copy and paste, we'll paste that name back on there so we don't lose the name. You may not want to lose it. Uh, it's just a, a way of working so I can keep things in order. Now, if you, if you can see here, we've got the whole thing bounced out. We don't want that. So I want to drag this all the way back. I'm using the hardware to do this and I'm just going to zoom in a bit so I can see the zero crossing right at the end before the next kick hits. And we're going to truncate that. Now, if you want to truncate on the, the actual software, this button down here is truncate hit that button or if I, on the hardware, press, press apply and that will truncate the sound. Now you've got the one sound here. If we press play, we'll go back to unsampling mode and you can see the whole sequence is there. So that, that's working as it is. Let's hit play. Pull this all the way up to zero. Now you can see that's a mono signal as we were talking about earlier. Now. To get into why you'd want to do this, just a little bit of information. It's not a tutorial on, you know, mono versus stereo and all that sort of stuff. Uh, there's a whole, you know, reason why you'd want to do this uh, versus you may not want to do this. But for one of the reasons is converting some of the signal into mono or all of it might help you get some clarity on that instrument. Now for kicks and low end bass, um, it's most likely you want some of it, for the most part, the lower end frequency, probably below 80 hertz in mono. Um, you may not, you may not want any of it in mono. It doesn't have to be. There's no set rule. I mean, there are reasons why you'd want to have it in mono, but there's no set rule as far as the technicality of it, other than the fact that you might get phase issues. So if you, for example, work on a mix and you want the kick to be wide and you want some other sound to be in the center, for example, a vocal, you might do this opposite to what I just did. You might make the kick really wide by using the Huss effect on this thing here. So the Huss effect basically just delays the sample. So it's getting one side left and right, pretty much delaying it. So it's wider, but it makes it sound like it's from the one place. 
and there's a whole technical thing behind that. So 20 milliseconds, which you can see here, it's actually anything below, I believe, 40 milliseconds. But if you're using 20 milliseconds, it kind of delays it, you know, half that amount. Um, it's it's really dependent on how much you use timing wise and stuff like that. But the the basis of it is if you've got a high end frequency, for example, this snare, and you don't want the snare to be right in the way of the vocal, you may want to make it wider. Um, vice versa, if you want the snare to be the position in the center and you somehow don't want the vocal in the center at that point, you may make the snare a mono sound and the vocal, you know, wider or whatever you want to do with that. So there's a whole reasoning behind it. It's just up to you. You know, it's your own piece of art. So you're working on your own music and that's the purpose. But nonetheless, this is the quickest and best way that I've found to get a mono sample inside a machine. That way you can do it to each individual sound and just work through whatever sounds you have there. And you can visually see what's going on as well with this plugin. So tops from that. So anyway, if this helped, remember to like, share and subscribe to the channel. Catch you on the next one. Peace out.